Hi, it's David Davis from VMWareVideos.com, and I'm here at VMware Partner Exchange 2011. I'm honored to be joined by Steven Spilisi from Vertensis, and you're the Director of Marketing, right? Correct. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for coming on Thank uh, you, the David. show. <laughs> uh, this is fun. So we're going to learn today about uh, I.O. virtualization, right? Great. Yes. Thank you very much. Appreciate sure. the introduction. So um, essentially what, what Vertensis does, the problem that Vertensis solves is minimizing, reducing the physical layer complexity and the logical layer configuration complexity of managing and provisioning I.O. to standard rack mount based servers. Okay. So in, in the context, if I will, of um, of a traditional network infrastructure within a data center. You've got your standard rack mount servers within your racks, 19 inch, you know, 40U. You've, in in each, each individual server, you would dedicate infrastructure that would connect up into top of rack networking gear, right? right. So um, what that means is that you'd have to manage multiple points of, uh, effectively multiple points of management for interfaces, uh, HBAs, 10 gig NICs, maybe RAID controllers and otherwise. Um, well, this is the standard way of doing things, and we've done this pretty much business as usual for years. There really is a better way to do this. And the better way really is around improving the way we cable up those infrastructures and, and get better resource utilization and management out of those connections. Uh, the other key aspect there is the obvious um, draw on power and power resource utilization on the actual physical system. So in, on average, a typical uh, interface card, whether it be a fiber channel HBA, a, a converged network adapter, or standard 10 gig NIC, um, these interfaces can range from either five to upwards of 20 watts of power draw per physical card. Wow. So uh, what we did is we actually essentially wanted to solve that physical and logical layer uh, dilemma, as well as make the traditional data center more efficient. Now okay. obviously our technology uh, is 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 a is a new and emerging part of the field, mm -hmm. um, if you will. It's analogous with um, the way that physical servers are consolidated into virtual servers, vis-a-vis -vis VMware, right? And hyper right. hypervisor. Um, we take physical layer connectivity, uh, a fewer number of high-powered physical I/O resources, and and allow the ability to virtualize those same resources. Uh, but not have to deploy dedicated I.O. adapter infrastructure within physical servers. And we do that through our own technology, uh, which essentially is based on PCI Express, an extension technology, and then there's a hardware virtualization layer where the servers connect into that present back over that extension a virtual instantiation of a traditional I.O. adapter. So when a server uh, is connected to Vertensis, they're connected over a PCI extension cable. And again, this can be deployed in a highly available manner so we can put two of our cards and two of our cables to two of our appliances. Um, it connects over this PCIe infrastructure, by the way, which is standard technology deployed in all servers worldwide, universally accepted. Okay. So essentially, we're extending that connection into our appliance. On the other side of our appliance is traditional I.O. connectivity. But as I mentioned before, fewer numbers of the same type of high-powered cards you would typically dedicate in physical infrastructure. So now you're deploying less physical points of management in each server by offloading that into a centralized appliance where you can manage all your I.O. connectivity at the top of rack. Now it definitely has a draw uh, reduction on, on power as well as it improves the way you manage and deploy effectively on demand allocate new interfaces to new servers. This is a very interesting concept to a lot of customers that are trying to simplify the rollout of new servers and the management and maintenance of new servers in their environment, existing as well. Effectively, what we do is we make servers blades in a rack, where the rack becomes the blade center. Okay. So we effectively disaggregate I.O. from the standard server, bring it to the top of rack, and all that centralized management is done in a single point of management and control. Okay, so if I were, you know, kind of the typical VMware admin today and I had, say, five servers, um, a lot of servers today have like four gig Ethernet yep. ports and then two fiber channel connections that's back right. to the, the fiber channel switch. And so, I mean, you're talking about right there, that's six, that's six right. cable connections. And then if you had five servers, that's 30, you know, cable that's connections. Right. Lots of cables. Which, I mean, might be manageable if you just had five servers and 30 connections. But when that scales up to 100 servers and, you know, right. you can do the math, you're talking hundreds, you know, of connections. and. Uh, it just becomes, I would think, overwhelming, and uh, not only just in the the cost and the the space to manage all these cables, uh, but also in the troubleshooting. When sure. it comes to troubleshooting all those cables, 
um, and managing all those, you know, HBAs and everything right. like that. And also the switch ports. That's uh, correct. Yes. There's a tremendous expense in the network switch ports and that's a great fiber point. channel switch ports. Yeah, every one of those traditional ports that we deploy is going to have a corresponding switch port up here in the uh, top rack. So that means for every 10 gig card that you deploy in the traditional network, every 10, every 8 gig or 4 gig fiber channel port or every CNA port to a converged Ethernet switch is going to require a connection here and a connection here, and it's going to require dedicated cabling infrastructure. Wow. So what Vertensis does is take those smaller number of high-powered traditional adapters and greatly minimizes the total number of connections that need to go out to the rest of the world, the rest of the network. So now instead of using, say, you know, if you've got 16 servers and you've got two connections per server, you need a 32-port switch. Yeah. If you have dual fabrics, you need multiple, right? So now here we've got eight ports going out to a traditional network infrastructure. So now admins can actually deploy smaller workgroup style switches or a larger director and actually collapse all those connections, a fewer number of those connections, into that single infrastructure. Instead of having to manage multiple switches, multiple layers, and then, of course, have to drive lots of port utilization out of those switches. Yeah. A lot of wasted, frankly, a lot of wasted ports. Right, and those fiber channel ports on a fiber channel switch can right. cost That's a fortune. Right. Uh, in fact, in our own labs, and, and some of our customers experience this as well. We buy fiber channel switches, we love fiber channel. We buy fiber channel switches and we buy them in eight packs. We don't need to buy them in 32 packs wow. of ports. We can buy the brocade switch in an eight pack config and move it up to 16 when we need it. So it's a, Vertensis is a, is a switch, if you will, a switch point, uh, port or a access layer switch port conservation or preservation technology. It's not meant to take down ports and eliminate or, or remove the need for a switch. Mm -hmm. Rather, it's there to conserve and make more efficient use of what's already there. Okay, okay. So you all essentially sell these hardware appliances, right? Yes. So it's a piece of hardware. That's right. That would go on the rack. And then there's cables that would connect to the that's physical correct. servers and then a card in that's the correct. server. That's correct. That's okay. actually, and that's a great way of describing it. Those are all the subcomponents of the entire solution. Okay. In fact, the product is sold in a complete bundle. So you, okay. we don't sell, we, we do sell single cards if one needs to be replaced or an additional need to be purchased for a, a you know, for another reason. But we, our models are specific to the number of servers you want to connect. So we do a minimum configuration of eight servers, eight single connections, and two I.O. cards, those traditional I.O. cards that I spoke of. And, and then we give you all the cards and all the cables for eight systems. Okay. Uh, in, a, in our maximum model, we have a 16 server configuration, which again is all in with all the cards, all the cables, and all the appropriate I.O. cards that are going to support those 16 connections. Okay. And then initially when you talked to me about putting a card in my vSphere server, Correct. Um, the first thing that I thought of was, oh, I'm going to have to install a driver on That's ESX, right. and is it going to support it? And, right, right. And one of the things you told me is there's no drivers. That's correct. So um, when I say we have traditional I.O. adapter connectivity, we have the QLogic uh, uh, 2562, the 8 gig adapter. We have the Intel Niantic, which is the 82599, and we have the LSI Mega RAID controller. We also virtualize uh, a RAID controller for SAS and SATA RAID connectivity. Those appear to the host over the PCI extension and through our virtualization layer mm -hmm. as those same physical cards. So the ESX okay. server sees the Niantic, it sees the QLogic uh, 2562, and it loads the drivers that are right within the hypervisor's driver stack. Wow. There's no additional, no additional uh, requirements beyond, above and beyond that. And that's, by the way, a design goal. It was a design goal of our, our uh, CTO and our engineers to minimize the touch on the actual physical host and not have to add additional software or footprint to manage on that host. Okay. So it's actually quite a competitive advantage, but also mm -hmm. uh, it's something that administrators typically like. They don't have to do all that additional patch management. Yeah. And, and the other piece that's probably not as obvious is because we're not putting dedicated HBAs in, in you know, our card is a simple passive device. It's just an extension card. It's dumb for all intents and purposes. Okay. But if in a traditional world, you'd have to manage and maintain every one of those connections. In the case of something like Fiber Channel, not to pick on Fiber Channel, but if you ever had to update firmware on a Fiber Channel adapter, you know that it can be a labor-intensive process. Yeah. You mentioned before 30 servers or 100 servers. Right. Multiply it, and all those single points of management come update firmware time. It can be a real headache. So yeah. now I have fewer fewer cards up here. So if I have to do those types of updates, they're done through our firmware stack with the drivers or with the firmware updates from QLogic or from Intel. Mm -hmm. So it's again, minimizing the admins work and amount of work they need to do as it re relates to the sort of routine mundane tasks that nobody wants to do anyway. Okay. <laughs> I would think it would also prevent downtime. Definitely. I mean, yeah, prevent definitely. outages because you have 
you know these fewer updates to do. That's you right. have fewer cables yeah. to, to troubleshoot. You and can stick to that five nines if you want to go greater. You yeah. can go greater, right? So. And then you mentioned power savings as well. That's correct. Yeah. So that that whole um, wattage draw on each individual. What we see in in uh, in, in most typical configurations. Uh, for instance, I'll, I'll say, I won't pick on fiber channel in this case, uh, a standard 10 gig NIC I see around 6.2 watts per interface card. Mm -hmm. Mileage varies depending on which make and manufacturer and model, um, but roughly they're about the same, anywhere from six to seven watts per card. So if you have two of those cards, you're drawing 14 watts of power just for those interface cards per server. Again, back to your math, add up the number of servers, multiply it by whatever you've yeah. got in your data center. It's an expensive proposition. That card I mentioned that's used to extend the signal from the, from the native PCIe slot in the back of a standard server into our appliance, that card consumes less than one watt of power wow. per interface card. Wow. So in, in most cases, we see in the case of fiber channel and converged ethernet adapters, we see upwards of 20 watts versus one watt for our card. Wow. So that does add up as you start stacking up the number of servers in a rack mm -hmm. and the number of racks in a data center. Yeah. It can be a huge power saving. And then all the infrastructure behind that, the That's UPS is generating everything yeah. like that. And then the cooling That's correct. To, to cool down that equipment. So, um, so, I mean, if virtualization makes sense to someone, then to me, IO virtualization also makes sense. It's the same concept, um, you're consolidating, uh, you're doing more, you're, you're increasing. More with less, yeah. More with less, yeah. yeah. You're increasing the utilization. You're not wasting um, wasting your, your, your network adapters like you are in the, the traditional physical model. Yeah, and, and that's a great you know that's a great point because if you do put a 10 gig NIC here mm -hmm. and you get a new server next week but you don't have any 10 gig NICs, that NIC is captive to that host. It's not like you can share that NIC with these two new hosts. With, with Vertensis, you simply cable up the new server, connect it to the appliance, and because we do I.O. sharing through our virtualization technology, it gains access to 10 gig NICs when it needs it, or fiber channel NICs, or RAID controller when it needs it. And you, by the way, can take it away as easy as you can give it. Wow, wow. Amazing stuff, it's a really cool product. Well, thank you very much, David. I appreciate the overview and the education Thank on I.O. virtualization. Thanks for your time, Stephen. Thank you very much, David.